welcome back to uh, oh as if with lisa ferrell and bye assistant hello uh we're just here for 25th episode it's a special uh episode i guess i mean i assume we're probably gonna have another one in this season too technically speaking every season has 24 episodes and we're supposed to be on season three but we don't have the photos done yet that means that we can't do season three yet you know what i mean and uh my assistant is traveling for work so we can't do it we're gonna chat a little bit about just kind of the ethics of artists making money or whatever but not quite basically selena gomez became a billionaire the reason for it is not her singing movies whatever the hell uh like she did make a lot of money doing that but I think it's like only 20 or 30% of her net worth now. And then everything else was created through Rare Beauty. And the thing is, I do like me some Rare Beauty. Like, the blush, it's here and it's blushing. Like, can't lie. The clock is pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. It's not like I hate the brand or something like that. As much as it's just like one of those things that we kind of have to discuss because it's gonna... It just keeps on coming up every fucking business day. This conversation, it's usually around Taylor Swift because there's just like so many people who know about her and also she has so many fans that people consistently talk about how artists making a billion dollars off of their art or whatever, ethical, yada yada. And the fact of the matter is they don't actually make their money off of albums and when they do oftentimes it's through weird tactics like releasing deluxe and then special versions over and over and over again that's kind of you know it was popularized i think by k-pop groups to to have like multiple variations of the album whatever and to a certain extent i think it's a good idea because for example I love photo books and I really enjoy like if it's a really strong concept, I would love to have a photo book of something. But I don't think that it's necessary for every album. If you don't want it, you can just get like a little CD version or whatever the fuck, right? Like it's kind of, it costs a lot less and it's just uh, less of a hassle, I guess. I don't know, but nice to have a choice, right? But people go overboard and they buy all the versions. And I think that it's kind of what Taylor has been doing a lot. Taylor Swift yeah. doing special, oh. I didn't think about it that way. When Charlie was supposed to debut number one, she released a special version of her latest album with extra Girl. with extra songs so she can still stay on number one for longer. Damn. Like, bro, come on, bitch. You've been number one forever. Like, let another girly have a chance. This is what I'm saying. I don't care what anyone says. She's anti-fem. Sorry about it. I mean, I think that it is quite clear that she's, like, not a feminist because her feminism only includes people like her. <laughs> it includes her. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And also, <laughs> on top of that, she's, like, friends with, like, Trumpies and stuff like that. Especially now that she's dating that, that guy who... The football guy or whatever. It's so fucking funny that Americans genuinely... No offense, but, like, it's just funny that Americans genuinely were having a debate who's more famous. As if anyone gives a flying fuck about football, like, American football outside of America. And Canada, I guess. So, basically, it's kind of really confusing when people are saying, well, they made money with just, like their music no they didn't if you look at the breakdown of where the money came from 70 percent of it is like side ventures where they were siphoning the work out of somebody else we just had like, this little discussion off camera we should just like change it a little bit a little bit though it'd be too obvious well yeah i'm not gonna tell the entire story i'm just gonna say about the phone there was like this really funny situation that happened to me um during like one of the gigs that i was doing for work yeah this is a continuation of our of our lore yeah this is like another funny creative field story for you guys but i was just like talking about a new collection how i need to do what is it called a campaign a campaign Shoot. yeah like i need to do a campaign for it and i pull out a phone because this like this girl asked me to show the new piece of jewelry you know like or like the new collection and i pull out my phone i'm like looking for it for the picture and she's like oh wow your iphone is so vintage <laughs> cricket, cricket, cricket. I'm just like I was so like not you with the what iPhone you got? I think it's like XS or whatever. Yeah, mine is XR. Lol. <laughs> See, not us two bitches with the only iPhones that don't have a number on it. Bitch, honestly, I genuinely. I mean, like it's kind of it's technically like eleven, I guess, right? Because it's like 
X is 10 or like it's like the next year after 10, whatever the fuck it was. I don't remember. I don't remember what, which year I even bought it. It's just so strange. I was like, girl, what are you even fucking talking about? When you make them question their career, the, the authenticity of their career. Uh, I yeah, I forgot to mention that it. before that happened, she asked me what I do, whatever, right? And we were talking about art and i asked her like where she got her education and stuff like that i didn't like i wasn't like oh where did you study it was more like kind of low-key complaining about academics kind of you know like kind of talking about how fuck knows how it came up honestly i just remember that like i asked her did she do painting in school or did she like well i think like I feel like, and this is a why I'm saying it's part of her lore because it's just a constant reoccurrence of, and maybe you know maybe we're being biased because we did go to school for it. But like every time I feel like you meet somebody in the industry who has like a really good art job, like a job in the arts or around that field, that's very stable and pays well and stuff like that. You think like, oh, like yeah, what school did you graduate from? Like what program? Like you think about that because half the time you do need those requirements not even half the time technically speaking you should have like you should have those requirements considering that whenever i apply for something that's like entrance level yada yada and then i see who got it if it's not someone who is like a nepo baby it's usually someone who's who literally was like a guest professor or guest teacher or something like that in my university and i'm like how are you like why are those people getting entrance level like what is going on with our system that these people that are a lot more capable than that have to be settling for a job that pays like 21 dollars an hour yeah and then and then we come to find out that hmm those people never have an arts education, let alone that, because with this with this girly, she doesn't have an education at all, which is like even better, I guess. I kind of just like changed the subject because she definitely was, well, w quickly took it to offense, which they always do. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just being curious about what she studied in school because I wanted to talk about her art practice because she's like, she says that she's an artist, right? So I wanted to see the projection. Um, is it projection? Trajectory. trajectory, sorry, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to see the trajectory because usually when you do something in school, it doesn't mean that you were doing the same medium afterwards or vice versa. So I wanted to like just like ask her why she ended up with in this particular medium that she's working in right now. Yeah. So that's why I brought it up. But I didn't expect her to say that she doesn't have an arts education, nor does she have any education, but she's running a gallery. Yeah, and which is like still hearing it is actually shocking but also like the the whole asking about it too is like if you're if you graduated art school and you see somebody who's like at around your age and they're like you know running a gallery or a curator or whatever it's like yeah you want to talk to them about it about their education like what can i do to get there too you know it's like mm -hmm. it's just natural to think that way i feel like it's never a slight because you definitely don't need you don't need an education this is what i'll say you don't necessarily need an education to be an artist, but I think if you're running it in a, like, professional or managing capacity, you should have a yeah education. Yeah. Or if you're doing curating, like, that's totally different from, like... That's academic work or managerial work, so you need at least, like, something related to that. Like, I mean, considering... Listen, this is not the 90s where you could have just had a career without a degree if you are a regular person. That's not yeah. how it works anymore. And we all know it because we can't even get a fucking stupid ass receptionist job without having an administration degree now. This is so stupid, but it's just how it is. So that's why it's so weird when people don't have a degree, but have a job that you would require a master's degree or something like that to acquire. Yeah, 100%. So I, I, it wasn't a slight. I was just being curious about what her background is. So afterwards... It was so weird. Like, I, she definitely was trying to, like, not snap back. What would you call that? Uh, I would say snap back. <laughs> that, that's one way to put it. Because it was so weird. I was like, definitely who even says to, that? <laughs> yeah, definitely trying to, like, recuperate. You know, like, I, I mean, like, besides the fact that it was offensive and rude, I think for the most part, the most important thing was, uh, was to get, like, a sense of, like, power back after being clocked after you clocked her even though you didn't mm. so I needed to like feel some power so she like 
said something demoralizing i guess i don't know happens often i know i i also find that often that it does happen but it's just really funny each time because it's like you're talking to the wrong person if you think that this is gonna do anything you're literally talking to the wrong person because the thing is um material conditions or like status and stuff like that they are things that i'm aware of and things that i have to comment on and stuff like that to just like not be um a passive dickhead like this is just how like life works and you kind of have to be talking about these things if you don't want to be perpetuating the those things but at the same time you're talking to somebody who doesn't really feel defined by those things at all just honestly get cancer at 24 you're not going to be defined by a lot of things yeah if you want to make someone cry you should have said that to me because <laughs> i'll cry immediately i'm weak <laughs> it's just funny because it's like you know so silly i'm not at all feeling different when i have something or when i don't have something in a sense of like my self-worth so it's kind of really weird when people are trying to comment on that it's kind of the same thing as like it's it's cringing me out so fucking hard when people see that i have a certain amount of subscribers or something like that and they change their tune it's kind of the same thing it's like okay ew aka flashback to getting into the club <laughs> Fuck, i know i oh my god another thing that i had like also happened recently also was at, at a photo shoot that i was working on this girl this model wouldn't even fucking look me in the eye wouldn't even look me in the eye okay i'm oh, like yeah. i'm supposed to like get her dress whatever like give her her outfits whatever the fuck she was just being so weird about that and then one of the people who were working on set, they like knew a little bit about me. So they like asked me about Cyprus and stuff like that because I was born there and like I lived there. It was so strange because that girl switched up so quick as soon as she heard the word like Europe or the Mediterranean. Yeah. I was just like, oh. that's actually the funniest part because I guess that to a lot of North Americans like Europe has some kind of connotations. Um, I guess with like class or money or something, at least in terms of like just association i guess i don't know because the switch was so immediate and so weird like you were literally wouldn't even look me in the eye the entire time i'm working with you but now suddenly suddenly you're like talking to me and interested in my life the fuck mm. like before i would ask her a question she wouldn't even answer seriously yeah tell me that's how she fucked she would answer the photographer, the photographer will be like hovering around kind of like asking questions because we were trying to decide something about the shoot because like the outfit wasn't working on her the way that we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And like she was just kind of like hovering, like asking questions, right? And she would kind of direct her answers towards the photographer, not me. And I was just like, bitch, I'm right here. Like I'm asking you a question. It's actually so disturbing that people will actually not treat you like a human in real life you know what i mean like that's so dystopian to me mm -hmm. like oh all of a sudden you prove to her it's like all of a sudden she checks like your how many followers you have for example and then you become a real person to her is actually in real life is so scary that's what i'm saying like it's so dystopian and weird because the the it's specifically it's honestly like night and day the way that they're treating it's either they hear something that triggers something in them like the europe thing or they see my account or something like that and triggers in them something i don't know it's just such a weird weird switch it's so drastic yeah it like creeps me out every time yeah it does creep me out honestly and i'm scared of that too the amount of i mean like even not working and like traveling and doing all this shit recently i've like experienced a lot of that too and it's really made me depressed to say the least yeah. like people just like treating me differently like just depending on like what i do or like even talking about even remotely bringing up my background mm -hmm. and like struggling or whatever i find people get so awkward about that yeah because you don't fit the the their perfect image not of you but of themselves in a sense of um as i've said before we had this conversation about this whole thing that they are so obsessed with this cult of uh suffering they need that suffering to feel like they're worth something and it's specifically like an affliction of people who are not struggling at all like it's literally a problem with the with them because they bring it up as like 
some kind of badge of honor. But if people actually struggled or actually don't come from money or anything else, really, like if they actually had real life problems. I'm just thinking now that you now that you said that, yeah, I'm, I, it's probably and sorry if I'm fucking I keep stuttering. <laughs> Lol. I keep stuttering I'm re- recently, too. Yeah, I think we're just- <laughs> I think we're just over fucking worked. But anyways, I used to think before, like, oh, they're awkward because like just typical, like, oh, rich kid doesn't want to hang out with like a poor kid or kind of thing. But now I, I realize it's actually the cult that cult of suffering concept where it's like, especially when it comes to like people, you know, in the arts and or I find it more prominent in fashion mm-hmm. personally. But like when they feel invalidated, when they hear like, oh fuck, like you suffered like that now yeah. what i have to say sounds so stupid you know yeah that's the thing like i think that that's what makes them stu- like get stuck um when when they're talking to you in general another story time i had a let's say a a kafafel, a little a little tiff with somebody that i was working with and they have been on a just a just a streak a tantrum streak let's say there was one breaking point where in front of you know multiple people who i feel like everybody's been working so hard for this person where they said that this was the most unhelpful group of people that she has ever worked with i almost lost my shit after hearing this like like lost my shit like I actually like almost exploded and just had to go somewhere else and scream because one not not only was everyone dropping their shit to do this work and not complaining either honestly probably out of fear that they will throw another tantrum but this person has also never ever worked with another group of people has never this is like the only job they've ever worked so in my head I'm thinking how would you know the difference <laughs> like it's just funny that this is and, and and not to like I feel like me talking about this too can come off as the cult of suffering and maybe I you know what and maybe it is <laughs> a cult of suffering. but I could be a cult leader in suffering because I actually suffer do you know what I mean <laughs> like I'm sorry I'm over this humble shit like I actually went through fucking hell and I'm still going through hell Lisa's going through hell We've both gone through hell. So, like, to hear somebody complain about this shit and cry over a billion-dollar company job actually makes me want to shoot my brains out. Mm -hmm. Have a sense of, like, perspective. Yeah, like, you can be upset about things, but you need to know that you cannot voice some of the, you know, feelings to people that you're voicing it to. Read their room. Yeah, I think it's just, like, it would be fair. It would be fair if it was actually true. Like yeah, you're at least, with, like, at the very least. Yeah, yeah, like you're working with like the most laziest mofos in the world, but it's like you're not. It's like people are actually working really hard for you, and even though like you're not really entitled to it, but people are doing it because they give a shit, and then you're going to complain that this is the worst you've ever experienced. It's like, dude, you you haven't experienced shit. Mm-hmm. One time, one time, one of my like when I was doing design for this per- for a, a certain person as a job, they said that I, you have really good ideas, you have great taste, but your earth or your work ethic is shit because you're a fucking Filipino. Then talk huh? to me, yeah, blank out my race, but you're a fucking beep, and I'm like, dude, and you're literally you're literally being like this is the worst team ever when everyone's like patting your back oh my god don't cry it's not personal oh my god like girl it is personal at this point because you're a dumb bitch (laughs) that was my little story it's kind of on the it's kind of in the same just like world of just like it's it really it really hurts people when they want to they want to like not hurts them but it makes them feel really uncomfortable when they actually start to hear about like suffering in a very like corporeal way like oh my god i couldn't eat Mm -hmm. like i got kicked out of my house like it kind of kills their ego a little bit and they hate that yeah like instead of being instead of it giving the perspective they just get kind of bummed out and angry about it Yeah, bummed out and that's the perfect term bummed out by it like Like, it's it's kind of like the thing that i experienced a lot in high school where um like for example like I had this friend and uh it was raining outside and she had her car parked outside of our parking lot because the parking lot in school that I went to was really tiny for the school that I went to it was literally like maybe a hundred spots 
uh, that's generous or maybe honestly like 70 or something i don't know but we had a 2000 students school Damn. that's a big school for a parking lot that small but we were in the middle of downtown area so it was kind of like there's nowhere to expand either like they couldn't just like expand the parking lot or something so her car was parked outside of the parking lot but it wasn't that far it was literally like maybe seven minutes walking at the most yeah like leisurely walking not speed walking <laughs> i'm gonna scream and she was like complaining about it being like all teary-eyed about it being like oh my god i'm gonna get like all wet and stuff and i was like don't be bummed out about that it's fine like you're not gonna melt you're not made out of sugar it's fine and i was kind of like you know joking like the entire time i'm talking to her i'm not like being like you should shut the fuck up it was more like I like that yeah it's never like that yeah i was just like kind of trying to lift her spirits i guess because i was like that's not a problem like don't worry about it there are so many things you like we you will worry about in life this is not one of them like just let it go honestly and i was telling her i was like i have to walk to my mom's job to get you know a ride home because we lived really really far away i was like i'm gonna walk in the rain for 25 minutes and i don't have an umbrella like does it suck yeah yeah. But it doesn't suck that much. Like, yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. I won't die from it. And then she was like, she didn't talk to me for like months after that. And I was, I didn't even know that she was mad at me. Because <laughs> obviously I didn't because I don't pay attention to, th like, if you're not going to tell me, I'm not going to assume. Sorry to say, but I'm not going to be tracking your mood with a fucking, like, graph. So, I have this job to do, so I was broke to complain. Yeah, like, bitch, it's so weird. Like, I was literally, like, turned out that she got really mad about that. And then when we talked about it later, she told me, um, she was like, yeah, it's like you always have to bring up, like, as if it's like a competition. And I'm like, what do you mean a competition? And the, f the worst part about it, I was like, you, you, dude, you know what? Sure, maybe we shouldn't talk much because you genuinely don't have problems and it's like bumming you out. Yeah. Which is weird. And I think it's weird and I'm going to continue to think it's weird. So if you cannot get over yourself, there's nothing we can talk about, honestly. Later, because I, I was kind of feeling bad about that whole situation because she was always like a kind of a sweet person. But now that I think about it, I'm like, she's like a, a classic Canadian high school girl that thinks that you have to constantly keep like fake ass peace between everybody and everyone needs to like you to the yeah. point where you're never supposed to say anything real ever. And yeah. you're also supposed to be this like weird type of person who um, like, for example, when someone tells her that someone is an asshole, like someone did something, she goes, well, he didn't do anything to me, so I'm going to be nice to him. Yeah. Like, that's her attitude. Like, she's a friend to everyone, which means that she's a friend to no one. No, yeah. Period, comrade. Yeah, like, you can go fuck yourself, actually. If you're always trying to stand to everybody with your face facing them, that's just stupid. Someone in the world, they're gonna look at your ass. Not actually. Well, in my case, actually, because... <laughs> Literally and figuratively yeah. about me, though. Yeah, like, you're not gonna be able, even if, like, if you stand for anything, even if you just have a favorite color, like, that's how little of a an opinion you can have. Just having your favorite color. You're already going to piss somebody off who hates that color. Yeah. So it's weird to be so hell-bent on trying to make everyone like you and to have a friendship or an illusion of a friendship with everybody to the point where you wouldn't even believe your friend that someone is a bad person or that they mistreated them because you want to maintain that peace between you personally and that person. Fucking a hundred percent agree with that. I, there's so many situations where I have been like that, where like I have had friends mm -hmm. who would do that kind of thing, and I would almost do it too. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I want to be neutral, but bitch, no one likes a neutral ass bitch. No That's one likes the thing. Like, like when I moved, I realized that you kind of have to constantly behave as a neutral bitch for people to not think that you're an asshole. And I just was like so confused by that and uncomfortable. But I was like okay, Lisa, you need to play nice. You're not a citizen yet. <laughs> so yeah. as soon as I became a citizen, I was like, oh, fucking, yeah, thank God. Yeah. Fuck y'all for real. Fuck y'all for just... real, you suck. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's actually so It's actually so true. Even before, and Lisa knows this, when I was like in a, re in a particular relationship that wasn't the help. 
Yeah, that wasn't the healthiest. And I was like starting to help Lisa be like assist her with these kind of things. I remember being so like, oh my God, I actually have to bail out. I can't be like, I can't have anybody hear anything that I say because I don't want to be judged. And like, I'm saying all the wrong things because like this person made me feel very, um, you should beware. People won't like you if you say that kind of like fear. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. To be neutral, essentially. Like I need to be neutral. Like I, I have to be quote unquote, what they would say is neutral equals mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, like, uh, be an aesthetic and nothing else. Yeah. So don't say anything because you're going to look, you're going to ruin the illusion of it. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, well, I mean, like, ever since I became friends with Lisa, it's like, you can't be a neutral bitch with her. So if you want to be, <laughs> even a parasocial relationship with her, expect to not be a neutral ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, obviously talking on here and doing all this, you know, like, being part of the pod has let me just like have my fucking opinions because like so many of you guys who are listening are smart as fuck and get what we're saying and that really validates me you know like i feel like wow damn i can have an opinion on shit like there are people who get it yeah who get it and like aren't aren't dumb enough to think that we're just here to bully but are actually like yeah yeah like they know the difference between critic like criticizing and bullying or um whatever it is you know yeah so shout out shout out to the fairies yeah wait do the pod people have the same fandom name do we have a different name for this the fandom i don't know <laughs> sorry acting like we're fucking like so famous the <gasps> fandom you know what the fandom because <laughs> the the quote is coming from El um as if the quote is coming from Clueless, we should have like um, newly virgins who can't drive. Oh yeah! Do you remember that that phrase that she's like, "You're a virgin who can't drive." <laughs> Shout out to the we're gonna call and I know we're not trying to be pretentious. Like there's just no other word like fan base or like the listeners. We're gonna call the listeners the newly virgins. I really resonate with that name personally because how I would yeah. love to take back <laughs> <laughs> just take it back <laughs> and i also can't drive actually i hate the concept of virginity so maybe not it's funny but i hate the concept so much okay fine how about the monets because like from afar it's okay but up, up close it's a total mess that's the that's a phrase from Cher as well from that uh movie from uh clueless She's like, she's such a Monet. What do you mean? <laughs> From afar, she's okay. But up close, she's a total mess. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Actually, you guys suggest something. I know that they're going to have like better suggestions. I just know it. Yeah, let us know. Let us know. And we were actually going on about something else entirely before we like switched into trying to come up with a name. Anyway, the thing is, with that girl, I just remember like afterwards when I like already way 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 past high school i think i was probably i might have even graduated from university when i remember that situation and i was just thinking about it and i was like oh that's so ridiculous that this friend who i was friends with at that point for like two years already instead of going oh because i know that she was actually like later i realized that she also went by my mom's job every time in her car she i was like yeah, I was like, wait. So when I told you that I'm going to be walking for 25 minutes in the rain and I'm going to get soaking wet, you who was almost crying because you have to walk for five minutes to your car didn't offer to give me a ride, which is something because I was like, because I realized it later. I was like, wait, I would have reacted so differently because my reaction would have been like, oh, I'm driving that way. So, first of all, it's going to be more fun for us to walk on, like in the rain for five minutes together. But also, like, you don't have to walk for half an hour under the, you know, pouring rain. Yeah. And, you know, like, you can't, we can't, we can't be like, oh, yeah, she should have, like, she's entitled to, like, she had to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy that it wasn't even a thought. Honestly, no. Like, from my perspective, if I was in her shoes... That's what I would have done. And that's yeah. what I thought. Like, like if I wouldn't have done that in her place, I would feel like shit afterwards. Yeah, I would feel like complete shit. So I do think that it's like something you should do. It's just like, I didn't think that back then because I wasn't thinking. Because I wasn't in her shoes. And also I didn't have the perspective for some reason. I was just like not thinking about that. Yeah, you also didn't know either. It's like you didn't think, oh, sh like 
she's going the same way because she never asked you once. I genuinely just didn't think about where she's going to be driving. I didn't really think about like, any of that, to be honest, because again, I wasn't even comparing. It was just like us talking, I guess. And I just didn't realize, like later on, I was talking to one of the girls who I actually went to high school with and we were all friends together and we were talking about it and both of us kind of just went, huh. That's so weird that we didn't think about that. Yeah, at all. Because <laughs> because in her shoes, we would have both of us would have thought about that. Being like, oh, dude, you have to walk for that long under pouring rain? Bitch, get in with me. Even if I wouldn't be going the same direction. Yeah. I would probably give it give them a ride. But let alone when I'm going <laughs> in that direction and I'm literally passing by that building. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, I genuinely, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think about high school years. I did my best in terms of uh, um, assimilating mm -hmm. um, because I definitely needed to because my language, like my English was really, really bad and I needed to have as much practice as I could. So yeah, I had like a whole system in my first year in high school. I would literally talk to people for a really short period of time because I could tell that they would get really, really tired of speaking to like speaking to me really quickly. Like Canadians are obviously used to having like um, immigrants here and whatever. But at the same time, you could tell like through the way that they're acting and like their eyes how they glaze over while they're talking to you, that they have a really, really hard time listening to anything that's not almost 98% the same as their own accent. Like as soon as you deviate even like a little bit, it's kind of like alarm bells are going off. Right. Even now, I still get asked where I'm from all the fucking time. But back then, it was obviously a lot more prominent. It was basically all I talked about. It was so frustrating because I was like, no one wants to talk about anything else. Yeah. Like they would only talk to me to ask where I'm from. And I was like, good Lord, this is so boring. Like I have to keep on saying the same shit over and over again. Then I realized, oh, they can't stand speaking to me for too long. So I'm going to make as many acquaintances as possible and just keep on like having the same small talk with all of them until I get that small talk down to a T. Right. And then I would kind of basically just practice on them. Like every day I would practice on them, like have like a really short conversation with every single one of them. That's kind of very similar. And it was really easy to do because people here really love to have a script <laughs> for a conversation. Like that's the, that's the thing that they love most, honestly. That's why we're, we come off as so messy. Cause yeah. we don't, we've never had a script. Just like being so neutral and nice to everyone even when you don't like them it's like oh my god like can we not we don't have to talk some of us we don't have to interact it's not like we don't have to like each other yeah it's like when people bring up drama or like bring up something to somebody that they actually could have just lived on their life without having to bring it up like it's so insignificant mm -hmm. but they just bring it up anyways because they're bored mm -hmm. it's like, it be like do we have to like you don't like me i don't like you it's kind of a consensus yeah let's, let's just be civil and get over it you know yeah we don't have to talk at all that's the beauty of it yeah but that is seen as like such a taboo yeah it's like antisocial behavior or something yeah and it's like no and remember if you took anything from this because again this is like an unscripted extra like bonus episode for funsies mm -hmm. if you had to take anything from this just remember the wise words of our forefathers, foremothers. No one likes a neutral ass bitch. <laughs> no one. A friend to all is a friend to none. Okay? Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this crack ass episode. <laughs> this was a slave full or whatever. See what's I, thought you, I thought you said slave full. I'm like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, I do feel like a slave, because we are... Yeah. yeah. I was going to say something else, but that just did. Because we are. Gonna... <laughs> Literally. Okay. Bye. Bye.